Dear class 10, uh, we'll continue chapter number 6, uh, that is photosynthesis. Uh, last time we talked about uh, the definition of photosynthesis, components uh, involved in the process called photosynthesis. The process of photosynthesis, we, we found two phases. Uh, they are light dependent phase and uh, light independent phase. That all we did in the last sessions. Uh, today or in this session, we'll do uh, experiments on photosynthesis. Okay, experiments on photosynthesis to confirm it or to prove that the different components like you know uh, carbon dioxide, uh, chlorophyll, sunlight are needed for photosynthesis to prove that whether it is true or not. Okay, to prove that we'll do the experiments today in this session. All right, so. Uh, for all those experiments, uh, two of the things that you have to do in the beginning itself, or two of, two of the things that you have to know in the beginning itself, they are destarching and to test a leaf or starch. These two things we need to know first, all right? So beginning with destarching, okay? So destarching, what is destarching? So destarching uh, is a process of removal of stars from the leaves okay so to carry out the experiment first of all we need to remove all the stars present in the leaves okay so removal of the stars from the leaves is called destarching so how we do this so we do this destarching by keeping the plant the plant, the plant which you have taken for the experiment, which I have considered for the experiment, okay, that plant. By keeping that plant in a dark room or dark place for about 24 to 48 hours, that means one or two days, so that the leaves remove all the stars from there and store them in the different storage organs so that is called discharging which means removal of stars okay removal of stars is the discharging that means removal of stars from the leaf itself is discharging all right so that is discharging so after discharging now what we have to know is that testing a leaf for stars we are claiming that you know the plant is discharged or the leaf is discharged okay that is our claim whether it is true or not for that you need to test it so for testing what you do is that take a leaf from that plant okay take a leaf from that plant the plant which you have already kept it in a dark place for one or two days so from that plant take a leaf all right and dip it in the boiling water for a minute okay at least for one minute keep that plant or dip this leaf in boiling water for one minute so that the cells of this leaf are all killed all right then what you do is that then take a test tube here Take a test tube here, okay, this test tube containing, containing methylated spirit here, methylated spirit as I have written out here, okay, take a test tube containing methylated spirit here and dip this leaf here inside, alright, the leaf which is discharged is already put there in the test tube containing methylated spirit like this here all right and keep this test tube here in this position in the beaker this is the beaker here in this beaker here containing boiling water this beaker filled with boiling water that means the, this beaker is containing the water which is boiling okay there you have to keep this test tube containing now the methylated spirit and the leaf all right then you have to keep boiling this till 
the leaf becomes pale white. Okay, you have to keep boiling it till the leaf becomes pale white. All right, then after, after that, when it becomes pale white, then take it out. Take this out. So when it becomes pale white, that time the leaf is brittle. Okay, the leaf is now brittle. It is breakable. Okay, it is breakable. So it may not be, you know, it may not be, it may not be suitable for the taste. Now what you have to do is that you have to soften it. You have to soften the leaf by bathing it with the boiled water again. Okay, or the hot water. You dip this leaf again in the hot water. In the hot water. So that the leaf becomes now soft. Alright. So after softening the leaf, you spread that leaf in a dish. Okay, in a dish like that. Right in the this, or you just spread it in a plate or you know this like this. Then what you do is that you put some drops of iodine here. Iodine taste. This is the reason why it is called iodine taste. You require iodine to taste whether the leaf is containing the starch or not. Alright, so now put some drops of iodine out here, some drops of iodine here on this leaf. Alright, so what happens is that when you put some drops of iodine on it, the leaf turns to blue, uh, turns to brown coloration. It turns to brown coloration. It turns to brown coloration. Why? Because the leaf has not contained any starch. Okay, why it is turning brown? Because the leaf has not contained any starch in it. Had the leaf contained stars in it, would have turned to blue black. No, would have turned to blue black. All right. So had this leaf contained stars in it, the leaf would have turned to blue black. Soon after, the leaf comes in contact with iodine but it is not happening so why because there is no starch so that now the leaf is turning to brown all right so when it is turning to brown then it is confirmed that the leaf is free of starch so this is how you need to you know taste it so after every you know experiment you need to taste it by you know you know bringing the leaf in contact with iodine if it is turning to blue black then obviously there is stars but if it is not turning to blue black other than blue black suppose it is turning to brown yes it is not containing the stars so that way we need to make sure that it is discharged by testing it with the iodine test by this method uh, experiment number one to show that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis. As you all know that chlorophyll is very very important for photosynthesis. Okay, And that's the reason why we say only those plants where chlorophyll is present, the photosynthesis is possible there. Alright, otherwise it is not possible. There are some uh, plants like you know uh, organisms like you know fungi, mushrooms and all where photosynthesis is not possible because chlorophyll is not there. Alright, so to prove that here what you have to do is that you need to consider a variegated plant. What is variegated plant? Plant containing multicolored leaves. Usually uh, the leaves are green in color but there are some plants where the leaves are multicolored. Okay, like this you see here. Okay, here is a leaf where you can see the multicolored leaf where not only green portion is there but there, there are you know white portions also there. So those plants which contain the leaves like this, like this are called you know variegated plants. So consider a variegated plant for this experiment and keep this plant in a dark place for one or two days for this starching purpose okay then after one or two days after this starching what you do is that you just take a leaf 
there are many leaves but take one leaf or consider only one leaf for this experiment all right okay so before taking one leaf out here before removing the leaf first after discharging keep the plant again in the sun so that the photosynthesis takes place there okay so after some hours you know you need to take one leaf as i was telling you just take one leaf from there and now you just draw an outline of this leaf on a paper like that on a paper draw an outline of this leaf here yeah, like that on the you know paper and mark the different colored you know regions like you know this color is there this region of this leaf is green mark it green yeah. all right and the other region where it is white let us say so mark it white okay so after marking it now go for the test which is called you know iodine test which i have done uh, which i have come to know which how we have to test it that you all have already come to know go for the test so for testing okay or you know after the test what you can confirm out here is that you know those portions of the leaf which are green you find turning to blue black you know those portions which are green you see turning to blue black confirming that there is starch there is what starch formed why because chlorophyll was there and the other portions which were white okay which were or white like this you see turning to brown confirming that there is no stars okay so from this experiment what you understand is that only those regions only those portions of the leaves or only those portions of the plant where chlorophyll is present the photosynthesis is present i mean photosynthesis is possible there that means how important the chlorophyll is there for photosynthesis we can understand from this experiment now experiment number 2 to show that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis another important factor for photosynthesis is sunlight okay if there is no sunlight photosynthesis is not possible that's why we have already discussed that only during the daytime photosynthesis takes place to prove that let us carry out this experiment all right for this what you do is that uh, take a plant which is de-starched that means you have already kept that plant in a dark place for one or two one or two days for de-starching purpose all right then what you do is that uh, you just uh, after de-starching consider one of the leaves consider one of the leaves and cover the middle portions of that leaf with black paper or tape like this is I drawn out here okay this middle portions has been covered with the black paper or tape all right okay then just leave this be starched plant which is end where one of the leaves has been covered like this out in the sun for some hours all right then after some hours remove that covered leaf only okay remove the covered leaf only and take it for the test you know stars test whether uh, the stars is present there or not or in which portions of the leaf you know the stars is there or in which portion there is no stars let us take it for the test we'll <coughs> Now, experiment number three, we have now to show that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. Another important component of photosynthesis is carbon dioxide, right? which the plants get from atmosphere. 
okay, if there is no carbon dioxide, means photosynthesis is not possible. To prove that, what you do is that you just take a plant which is to be de-starched again, keeping this in a dark place for about one or two days. Okay, so after that, you see, take a twig containing some, you know, leaves out here, out of some leaves, consider only one leaf whose half portion, okay, the frontal half portion is inside the conical flex, like this here, you can see there in the diagram, which is there in the book also, so half of its portion is inside the conical flux. It is inserted into this conical flux containing potassium hydroxide. See here. This conical flux is already, uh, you know, containing a chemical called potassium hydroxide which can absorb carbon dioxide. So that if any carbon dioxide is there in the conical flux is already absorbed by potassium hydroxide. That means there is no carbon dioxide at all in this conical flux. So this half portion of this leaf is, you know, inserted into this conical flux through this split cord. Here is a cord which is split cord. Through this split region, this half portion of this leaf is inserted into this conical flux where there is absolutely free of carbon dioxide with no carbon dioxide all right then what you do is that you keep this set up outside in the sun for some hours okay so after some hours you take this leaf out and again take it for the taste okay it starts taste so you'll taste it again in the same manner all right so in the taste what you find there is that only the person which is inside the conical flux where carbon dioxide was not there you find turning to brown coloration that means their photosynthesis has not taken place that means there the photosynthesis could not take place there inside because of the absence of carbon dioxide there was no carbon dioxide so that photosynthesis could not take place inside which is proved by this change in the coloration to brown that means it is turning to brown which was that there is no stars but where is the other portion of the leaf which was exposed to the atmosphere you know you see turning to blue black showing that the presence of stars that means in this region the photosynthesis had taken place okay so from this experiment also what we can understand is that carbon dioxide is very much necessary for photosynthesis now we have uh, the last experiment number four to show that oxygen is produced during photosynthesis Okay, as you all know that uh, uh, photosynthesis uh, is the one uh, which not only produces or manufactures food but also releases oxygen to the atmosphere. Alright, okay, so for that, uh, uh, to prove that, what to do is that you just take some aquatic plants plants growing in water, like hydrilla. I've taken hydrilla here, hydrilla plants. Take some hydrilla plants here in the beaker containing pond water. This is the beaker which has contained pond water. So there you take some hydrilla plants and cover it with a short stemmed funnel. Funnel, as you see here, the funnel, short stemmed funnel. So you cover this hydrilla plants with this short stemmed funnel in this manner. All right, then what you do is that take a beaker, like I mean, take a test tube. Okay, take a test tube full of water. This test tube is there, full of water. Then invert it like this, invert it over this short stemmed funnel. Okay, as you see here, 
Okay, invert this test tube full of water over this short stand funnel and make sure that the water level in this beaker is above this stem of this funnel. Right? Then keep this apparatus or keep this setup outside in the sun for some hours so that the photosynthesis continues there. Okay? So after some hours you see the gas out here. Okay? You need to go for the taste of the gas collected in the bottom of this test tube. Gas is there in its top as is shown there in the diagram but which gas you need to taste it. We know that this must be oxygen but you need to confirm it by testing it. So you need to test it by bringing this test tube close to the you know glowing splinter. Okay. So after some hours when you are sure that the oxygen has been pumped out here you remove this test tube very carefully uh, as soon as the water is you know dropped you need to cover it with the thumb make sure that the gas is still there okay and bring to the bring close to the glowing splinter okay when you open this thumb when you open the you know mouth of this you know test tube close to the glowing splinter the glowing splinter now you know bursts into flame confirming that the gas to be oxygen because oxygen is the gas which support combustion okay so that's the reason why the glowing splinter bursts into flame so from this experiment what we understand is that oxygen is produced during photosynthesis okay so that's all about the different experiments on photosynthesis all right so in the next session uh, we'll try to you know finish up the chapter all right so i hope you people have understood and uh, please uh, go through the video uh, you know again and again so that you understand to the fullest all right so thank you very much